Hello children, I hope you all are in good health and are also doing your studies well. This is the second video of the chapter Some Natural Phenomena. In the previous video of this chapter, we have learnt about charges. We have learnt how charges behave, what are the two types of charges which are present in nature and we have also learnt that how the like charges ripple and the unlike charges attract each other. Today we are going to learn something more about these charges and we are going to explain the natural phenomena of lightning and thunder. So children, it is now possible for us to explain lightning and thunder based on these movement of electrical charges in the bodies. You have learnt in your previous class that during the development of a thunderstorm, the air currents move upwards while the water droplet move downward. These vigorous movements cause separation of charges. Well, though the process is not completely understood, it is it so happens that the positive charges collect near the upper edges of the clouds and the negative charges accumulate near the lower edges. There is an accumulation of positive charge near the ground also. When the magnitude of accumulated charges becomes very large, the air which is normally a poor conductor of electricity is no longer able to resist the flow and the positive charges meet producing streaks of bright light and sound which we see as lightning. So, lightning is nothing but the process of electrical discharge. This process of electrical discharge can occur between two clouds or clouds and the earth. Nowadays, we need not get frightened by lightning and thunder as our ancestors did. This lightning and thunder is associated with a large amount of release of heat and light. So, it destroys our property. This is still now not in control of the human beings, but we can always protect ourselves from this lightning and thunder and minimize the destruction caused by it. So, now children we will learn some safety measures which we should be taking when we face lightning or thunder. Lightning safety. During lightning and thunderstorms, no open place is safe. Hearing a thunder is an alert to go to a safer place. After hearing the last thunder, we should wait some time before coming out of the safe place. Finding a safe place, a house or a building. A house or a building is safe. If we are travelling by a car or by a bus, then we are safe with the windows and the doors of the vehicle shut. What should we do and we should not do during a thunderstorm? During a thunderstorm, it is never advisable to remain in an outside or an open place or open motor vehicles like motorbike or tractors. Even shelters in parks, elevated places are also not safe during lightning strokes. And carrying an umbrella is not at all a good idea. If we are in a forest, we should take shelter under shorter trees. We should avoid the big and the taller trees. If there is no shelter available and we are in an open field, we should stay away from all trees and poles or other metal objects. We should not lie on the ground, instead we should squat low on the ground or place our hands on the knees with head between the hands and because 
this position makes us the smallest target to be struck as you can see in this picture and what if if you are inside the house inside the house lightning can strike telephone cords electrical wires and metal pipes during a thunderstorm so contact with these things should be avoided it is safer to use mobile phones or cordless phones however we should also avoid using these during thunderstorms but it is never advisable to call up a person with a wired phone bathing should be avoided in order to avoid contact with running water or electrical appliances like computers TVs etc the electrical appliances in the house should be disconnected during a thunderstorm but now children how do we protect our household electrical appliances when there is a lightning or a thunderstorm this lightning or a thunderstorm is associated with a large amount of heat and light energy so if it falls on our buildings then there is a great destruction caused by this lightning so what is the way to protect our property from this lightning and thunder let us see to protect our house and buildings from the destruction of lightning we use something which is called as a lightning conductor so what is a lightning conductor as we have seen in our previous class that the charges will flow down from the body to the earth if the body is connected to the earth which we call as earthing the same principle is used for carrying the large number of charges which fall on the buildings during lightning or thunder a lightning conductor is a device which is used to protect the high rise building from the effect of lightning here there is a metallic rod which is taller than the building and it is installed in the walls of the building during the construction one end of the rod is kept out in the air but it is deep in the ground on the other end this provides an easy route for the transfer of electric charge to the ground as the metals columns which are used during the construction of electrical wires and water pipes in buildings also protect us to a certain extent so now children you have learned that how we can protect ourselves and the properties from the de destructive effects of lightning and thunder next we shall discuss about another natural phenomena which is earthquake you all must have heard about earthquake and its great destruction earthquakes can also not be predicted very early so it becomes very important for us to learn about earthquake and also to learn how we can protect ourselves from earthquake and minimize the damages caused by this natural phenomena so children let us learn something about earthquakes now fortunately the phenomena like cyclone and thunderstorms can be predicted to a certain extent by the weather department the weather department can inform us about a thunderstorm or a cyclone so if a thunderstorm occurs then there's always a possibility of getting a cyclone accompanying it so we get time to take measures to protect ourselves from the damage caused by these however there is no natural phenomena which we are able to completely predict accurately an earthquake is one such what is an earthquake and what happens when it occurs what can we do to minimize its effects an earthquake is a sudden shaking 
or trembling of earth which lasts for a very short time. It is caused by a disturbance deep inside the earth's crust. Earthquakes occur on the time, but they are not even noticed. But major earthquakes are less frequent and they can cause immense damage to buildings, bridges, dams and people. There is a great loss of both life and property. Earthquakes can also cause floods, landslides and tsunamis. Children, you will be surprised to know that in ancient times, people did not know about the causes of earthquake. So, there are many interesting stories which explain this phenomena in ancient times. One such interesting story is that, that the earth is balanced on the horns of a bull and when the bull shakes its head, the earth would shake or the earth would move. Similarly, there are many such interesting myths related to this phenomena of earthquakes. You can ask your grandparents or parents or refer to many books which tell us about the interesting stories related to earthquakes. But now we know that earthquakes are caused by the tremors which occur deep down inside the crust of the earth. These disturbances are mostly caused inside but on the uppermost layer of the earth called as the crust of the earth. The outermost layer of the earth is not in one piece, it is fragmented. Each fragment is called as a plate. These plates are in continuous motion. When they brush past one another or a plate causes to move another one due to collision, they cause disturbance in the earth's crust. It is this disturbance that shows up as an earthquake for the surface of earth. Although we are now sure what causes an earthquake, it is not yet possible to predict when and where the earthquake might occur. Tremors of earth can also be caused when volcano erupts or hits the earth or an underground nuclear explosion is carried out. However, most earthquakes are caused by the movement of earth's plates. Earthquakes are caused by the movement of plates. The boundaries of the plates are weak zones where earthquakes are more likely to occur. The weak zones are also known as the seismic or the fault zones. In India, the areas most threatened are Kashmir, Western and Central Himalayas, the whole of the Northeast, the run of Kutch, Rajasthan and the Indo Gangetic plain. Some of the areas of South India also fall into this weak zone or the seismic zones. The power of earthquake is expressed in terms of magnitude on a scale which we call as the Richter scale. Really destructive earthquakes have magnitudes of higher than 7 on the Richter scale. Both Bhuj and Kashmir had an earthquake of magnitude greater than 7.5 on this Richter scale. So, these earthquakes must have caused a lot of damage to these areas. The tremors caused during earthquake produce waves on the surface of earth. These are called as seismic waves. The waves are recorded by an instrument which we call as a seismograph. The instrument is simply a vibrating rod or a pendulum 
which starts vibrating when there are tremors. A pen is attached to the vibrating system. The pen records this big waves on a paper which is moving under it. By studying these waves, scientists can construct a complete map of the earthquake and they also estimate its powers to cause the destruction and hence precautions to take protection. As earthquake cannot be predicted and it occurs all of a sudden, it becomes very important for us to know what we should do when there is a sudden earthquake. So now let us discuss about some precautionary measures which can be taken. At first, people living in seismic zones where the earthquakes are most likely to occur have to be specially prepared. First of all, the buildings or the houses in these zones should be designed that they can withstand a major tremor. The modern building technologies has made it very much possible to construct buildings which are even safe during the earthquakes. We can also explore how people living in these regions were in earlier days taking measures to minimize the destruction caused by earthquake. What kind of houses are built in such regions? Children, you will find that there are special kind of houses which are made with wood or light materials so that the damage is minimized. Nowadays, the certain things which can be taken care of are to consult qualified architects and structural engineers. In highly seismic areas, use of mud or timber is better than using heavy construction materials. Roofs should be as light as possible and it is better if the cupboards and the shelves are fixed to walls so that they do not fall easily. One should be careful where the objects are hung on the walls like photo frames, water heaters, etc. so that they do not fall on people during earthquake. It is necessary that all buildings, especially the tall ones, have firefighting equipments in working order as there are possibilities of the buildings catching fire during earthquakes. Now, what precautions should be taken when you are at home or inside a building or at office or in school? At home, take shelter under a table and stay there till the shaking stops. Stay away from tall and heavy objects that might fall on you. If you are in bed, do not get up. Protect your head with a pillow. If you are outdoors, find the clear spot away from the buildings, trees and overhead power lines. If you are in a car or in a bus, do not come out. Ask the driver to drive slowly to a clear spot and do not come out from the car or the bus till the tremors stop. So children, today you have learnt about two very interesting and very important natural phenomena. That is, you have learnt about lightning and thunder and about earthquakes. So let us summarize what we have learnt today. Today we learned that the process of electric discharge between clouds and the earth or between different clouds cause lightning. Lightning strikes could destroy life and property. 
Lightning conductors can protect buildings from the effects of lightning. And about earthquakes, we learned that earthquake is caused by a disturbance deep inside the earth's crust. It is not possible to predict the occurrence of earthquakes. Earthquakes tend to occur at the boundaries of earth plate. These boundaries are known as fault zones. Destructive energy of an earthquake is measured on a scale called as Richter scale. Earthquakes measuring 7 or more on Richter scale cause severe damage to life and property. It is very important for us to know that what necessary precautions we should take ourselves to protect from earthquakes and thunderstorms. Children, these natural phenomena keep on occurring now and then. You can always find out about the massive destructions which are caused by these natural phenomena on various parts of the world. Where were earthquakes caused recently and where there was a great cyclonic storm or lightning and thunder which caused a large amount of damage to life and property can be found out from the newspapers or by referring to the books or magazines. So, children can take this as an activity to find out and learn more about how earthquakes have caused a lot of damages to our civilizations and even now how the life and property gets affected when there is an earthquake. You all should also discuss with your friends and family about the precautions which you should take when there is a thunderstorm or a cyclonic storm or an earthquake. I hope you all found this lesson very interesting and very important. So, that is all we have for today's session. Until then, keep learning, keep studying and take care of your health. Thank you.